Now there's two different scenarios that the 91st will get into when entering an urban area. There's different situations where you know there's a threat of different sorts of contact that we might come into. So in some situations we're going to be moving through an area. We're going to be moving through and trying to get to the other side of a safe, you know, of a critical zone or like a choke point like this. Now, in some situations we're also going to be moving to occupy. You know, if we're moving to this town area to try and actually occupy and stay here, then we're going to treat it completely differently than when we're trying to move through and just pass through an area. So something that's going to be really hard for you to learn and it's hard for everybody is moving while firing. We are not uh, you're not going to be able to stop and engage like you previously have within Arma and with outside of the game itself in other games. This is not a stop and engage environment when we're trying to move through the area. If we're here to occupy and secure, stopping and engaging is absolutely okay. But if we're here to move through, which I'm going to show you now, there's a protocol to follow and you're going to need to understand that that protocol is followed regardless of how much contact you come into. The only thing that can change that protocol is if somebody goes down or gets injured and you need to stop and reevaluate the unit stance. Now for entering an urban area like this, when you're moving through or occupying or regardless, you're going to maintain a stance. That's going to be a combat pace, guns up. You see the movement there? Perfect, you understand. So with that combat pace, you're going to need to make sure that you're maintaining that at all times through these areas. And that's a light jog with it. This pace is maintained regardless. Now with an urban area like this, we are always going to go to a tight stance. So go ahead, cut down your squad spacing when we're entering an urban area like this. And you're going to be pretty tight. That's, that's it. Perfect. Right there. So squad spacing is going to go to tight, and we're going to go ahead and proceed. Now with a formation like this, there is always going to be a point man or a team leader. The point man and team leader is in charge of the threat assessment when you're moving through an area. So as a point man or team leader, I come to this gap, which is gap right. I'm going to threat assess this, and I'm going to decide this is a, enough of a threat for us to stop and I'm going to initiate our movement formation. And our formation is me to stop here, and I call gap right. Max, you'll then proceed to the other side, and you'll cross cover. So Max cross covers. Okay, let's hold. Let's walk it back, walk it back, moms. I'm sorry. So we can show them one at a time. So uh, you're in exactly the perfect position. So you as the second man, the second I call out gap right, you're moving to that position and you're setting up there. The rest of the squad without skipping a beat, Max, is going to move past us straight to past y it, your position. So they're going to go ahead and sprint and keep moving. They're going to move fast. No stopping. And as soon as the last guy's clear, I'm up. And as the point man or team leader, guess what? I'm moving straight back to the head of the formation and I'm going to take up the next corner. So go ahead and go back off, JDM. And I'm going to take up the next corner, and I'm going to see this. Okay, this is a threat to me. I feel that this is a threat. Gap right. And now the formation has changed a little bit, but now JDAM is going to do the same thing. Cross cover. Squad moves. Move, 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 move. Don't wait, don't wait. And second, you're clear. Again, this has to happen very quickly. Getting stuck and getting frozen in an urban environment in an urban envir is the biggest risk. So now with a gap like this, I'm going to decide as the point man that this is not a threat. So you're going to treat it with a little bit of respect, but we're not going to do the whole formation for something like that. Same thing with buildings and such, is we're not here to stay. There could be an entire enemy base, one house down that direction, and I don't give a shit. We're moving through. We have greater objective. We have something else that needs to be handled further along, and we need to make sure that we're taking care of that. That being said... As the point man or whoever I am, I'm now seeing this gap. I see this as a threat. Qu gap right. Set. Go, 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 go. Now, the guys in the middle of the formation, your eyes are primarily forward and to the left, making sure that there's no threats coming from I'm those directions. Right, so we're going to keep moving. Again, I don't think this is a threat. This is a gap. I don't feel it's a threat. I'm going to keep moving. And if I keep moving, you have to respect that, regardless of who the point man is. I don't care if you're you know, Master Sergeant and the point man is a private. If the private makes a call, you need to trust his call. Now, that just goes towards the entire success of the entire unit, is that you need to understand that. Now, for the rest of this formation and for the rest of the movement through the town, there's a high possibility of enemy contacts. This is live fire, full speed. Understand that. Understood. All right, we're going to move. Contact's right. Get it? 
Not dead. I was just much. Shift left, shift left. What's he doing? Frag out. Take cover. Everybody good? Hello. Believe the threat's been eliminated. Let's go ahead and proceed, guys. All right, let's continue. Don't stop. I mean, watch that corner, obviously, but we're not stopping. We're proceeding. We're moving through the area. We are not here to stay. Shots high, high left. Gap right. Go, 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 go. Gap right. Pull up that. Go, go. He's set. He's good. Go. Left, left, left. Keep moving. Gap right. Set. Go. Good. You did exactly what you're supposed to. Just keep moving. Non threat. And I don't even have to say that. I'm just telling that now so you understand. High right, keep Steps. high right, keep moving. Gap right. Frag. Go, 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 go. Don't stop. Don't stop for anything, Max. Behind us, behind us, behind us. Keep moving. Now, we did have to stop and engage in that case just because of the situation. But in most cases, we're going to stay mobile as much as possible. No threat. Keep moving. Gap right. Go, 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 go. Set me there. Gap right. Contact. Frag out. Stay in cover. That was done. You guys okay? Good. Let's keep moving. Gap right. Contact right. Contact right. Your gap. We're not here to kill all enemies. We're here to move through the area. Minor injury. Let's keep moving. We'll deal with it when we get out of the threat area. Contact left high. Left high. Building. Building. Too much of a threat. Stop and engage. Occupy yeah. the structure to our rear. Occupy structure to our rear. Go, 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 go. Breach. Counter engage. Cross the street. High low, high low. Reloading. Breach. Jim, you good? I'm good. Check, check, no contact. Yeah. Alright, back outside, back outside, let's go. Enemy. Back to street level. Keep moving. So you see how we occupied, let's go ahead and freeze, everybody pause. Uh, you see how we occupied that structure there? That's what we'll do in a really tough situation. Say a convoy with like 30 guys decides to drive up the street. 
we're not going to stay in the street and keep moving, obviously. We're not going to stick to the plan that we just went over. We're going to need to be flexible, and we're going to need to change it up a little bit, and we're going to need to breach and clear a building like that. All right, any questions on urban movement and gap movement right now here, Max? No. Okay, so we're going to move on to urban clearing. There's two different types of urban clearing within the 91st. There's a four-man stack clear, which is on big buildings, large buildings. There's a two-man stack clear, which is on most structures. Now, this is obviously a drift from uh, the Ranger Manual, which is what we stick to for most of our training program. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use a demo on this building here. And I'm going to have you, Max, actually go inside, and you're going to watch what this looks like. JDM and I are going to do a two-man breach on this structure. So one of the key items is you're going to make sure that you're standing away from the uh, you're going to stand away from the hinges and you're going to be standing by the doorknob when you're going to plan on breaching. Now I'll show you why that's the case right now. You're always going to look for the doorknob when you're breaching. And you're again, breaching is all going to be done at this pace, which is the you know the the jogging the jogging guns up combat pace. But yeah, so you're going to stack on it. You're going to go to the doorknob. You're going to call stack 1, stack 2, and then I'm going to call a breach breach breach. And then I'm on the doorknob side because the door opens to the other side. Now, if I had made the mistake of not being on the doorknob side for this door, that completely ruins all the benefits I had of entering the room first. Enemy contact is able to then respond to someone coming through the door rather than me already being able to put down fire on them. So just kind of keep that in mind. Now, with all breaching levels, it's going to be a first man goes right, second man goes left pattern. So watch how that looks. We're going to do this at walking pace so you can see it. Stack one. Stack two set. Breach, breach, breach. And I'm going to move in, and as the first man, I'm going to move to the right, and I'm going to follow the wall, and he's going to follow the wall with eyes towards the center of the room. We're going to come to an obstacle. This could be a staircase. This could be a doorway. This is going to be a door in this case. JDM's going to call it out. Or uh, stack on you. Copy. Doorknob, stack one. Stack two set. Breach, breach, breach. And we're going to breach on the next phase. And we're going to continue this. Same protocol, right, left. He's going to see the stairs. And guess what he's going to do? He's going to call out the stairs. Stairs, stack on me. Stairs, and I'm going to call out the exit door. Exit doors are low threat. Again, threat assessment. Very low threat assessment on the doors. Stack two. Breaching, breaching. And we're going to breach. Door right. Stack two. Stack set, breaching. Now, do you see how that worked? Do you see how the first command goes right, second command goes left? Now, extrapolate it out to a four-man stack. It's the same thing. First man goes right, second man goes left, and we'll show you the benefits of that later on. But for right now, let's go ahead and do this. Everybody in outside. In an actual situation, this would be done extremely fast. Yeah, and in an actual situation, it goes very, very quickly. So go ahead and watch. Uh, Max, I'll have you breach with me now, but I'm going to have you lead the breaching group. Let me close up these doors. All right, go ahead and call it. Stack one. Stack two. Breach. Door. Door, door, door. Stack one. Stack two. Breach. Ah, uh, what happened there? Handle. Handle. All right, let's run it again. And that's something that you'll you'll start to stick in your mind. That's one thing that you'll remember from now on. Oh. You'll never forget it. Is you'll start to think every time you get a door in your face, you'll think, God damn it, the handle. Okay. Stack two. Mom's great. Stack one. Door door door. Stack one. Stack two. Reach. Oh. Staircase exit door. Staircase up. Stack. Stack two. Stack one. Breach, breach, breach. One exit door. One door. Stack one. Stack two. Breach. Whoop, oh, you did it wrong that time. Come bring it back. Now you got lucky. The door didn't open towards you, but you gotta go on the handle side. Just because the chance of the door opening towards you is high. Do you see like this one? Yes. 
All right, go for it. Run it again. Stack one. Stack two. Reach. Reach, reach, reach. Oh, you went, you went left. You got to go right. First man in goes right. Let's try it again. Stack one. Stack two. Reach. Excellent work. All right, let's head outside. All right, let's breach another structure. This one is going to be live fire. Can you guys make that happen? We can make. Yep. We can make it happen. We're going to this one. It's going to say rear door, but no, that's going to be a hassle. Shooters. All right. Changers. Are you good to go? Stack one. Wait one. Go ahead and lead and breach. Stack one. Stack two. Rich. Staircase door. Door. Stack one. Stack two. Rich. Oh, he's. Yeah. Stack one. Hi, hi, hi. All right, stack one. Stack two. Reach, reach, reach. We're not gonna be able to get up here either. Oh, we can, kinda. Shit, contact for sure in there. Tossing, flash. Eyes out. Good job. Contact us, he's still up outside. Yeah, Going to Glock, outside. Do you see how the combat pace will save your life in situations like this? Yes. Alright, that's it. I seriously hope these glitch corpses don't usually happen. <laughs> Any other questions on uh, two-man breaches? No. Okay, we're going to go to four-man breach, guys. We're going to go to the big building. You guys assist us with that phase. Right, if someone's got Zeus, could they drop a person away to catch on me? Could somebody do a Zeus heal on Max, please? Yeah, I got it. Max, just follow me. Again, we're not going to be full immersion for this whole training. We need to get through the actual concepts more than we need... Oh, shit. Don't go over there. Just, just don't go over there. Mom's at work. Barrel sticking out the window. Live fire. Four-man stack. Rear the building. Let's go. Now, this is a hard one. I can't really get on the doorknob, but I'm going to do the best I can. Up, 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 up. Hi, hi, hi. Pop and flash. In the window. Eyes down. All right. Stack one. Injured. Come for it. Stack two. Stack three. Breach, breach, breach. All right. First man goes right. Follows the wall. Second man goes left. Follows the wall. Push, 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 push. Door can't be opened. Door can't be opened. Push, push, push. Contact right. Hi. Now you being the left-hand man, don't stop. You're going to keep moving. You're going to keep moving with your team. I got two guys over here. That's plenty to shoot back. And guess what you're going to find? You're going to find that doorway, Max. It's going to happen fast. You're going to have to see this. You're going to have to see it's openable. You're going to go, guess what? Your two-man group has now made a mini breaching team. And I see the doors fighting there you. Too. So get on the right side with the doorknob. 
Call it. Stack one. Stack two, stack set. Breach. Clear. Path of your stack one. Stack two, stack set. Breach. Clear. Are you good? Yeah, one second here. All right, so let's go ahead and run it again. No contact this time. A four-man breach, what it looks like and how it actually comes together. So you go ahead and again we got get our stack going here. This is a really shitty door to try and open, but stack one. And we're gonna do this we're gonna do this at walking stack pace. Three. Stack four, stack set. Breach, breach, breach. This is a large building. That is why we're using a four man stack. As a lead breach man, if at any point you want a full um you know, you want a full breaching team, you can always ask for one. You can always tell your team leader, Hey, there's I got a funny feeling, I want a full breaching team, and then you can get a full full four man team. So stack one, and breach, 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 breach. First man right, follows the wall. Second man left, and look, okay, go ahead and freeze. Look how this is developed. Guess what we now have, Max? We have two two-man breaching teams. These teams are now able to push through the rest of the building and continue clearing. So let's go ahead and continue at walking pace. Now as we work our way around, we're still following the walls. So my team is going to come over here and guess what my two-man group is going to find? We're going to find a staircase. A staircase. And we're going to call it out. And guess what your team is going to find? That there were. And now yeah. again, this is specific to this situation, but of course, if we were going through a much larger building or a much smaller one, you understand this still applies in every sense of the way. You know, you're going to breach through and you're going to find different things and you're going to do two-man breaches. So you're going to do a two-man breach on that room. Go ahead and do that. And then we're going to do a two-man. We're going to do a two-man breach on the stairs. Stack one. Stack two. Stack six. Stack. Breach. 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 Right. Go right. Let's go back down. All right. Great work. Now come over here. Now one key item when you're clearing up the stairs. This is not an AIT item because AIT is primarily tactics, but. As a part of just general good thoughts for Arma, make sure you're doing your wraparound as you come up the stairs. There's very low likelihood of there being a threat right at the top of the stairs when you're sitting here, and you're going to need to work your way around. Yep. Mm -hmm. Watch yourself. There's right. still alive. Work your way around as you go. Okay, let's go ahead and go base level. We're going to breach and clear. We're going to do full speed. Full breach of the building. How are we at on time, Max? How you doing? Another half an hour. Good, because we're about to be... We're more than halfway. We're way more than halfway. Oh, that's fortunate. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and go... Get get out of here. Go go over there. Yeah. If someone sends you straight net, if they drop me in, I think they'll you. Oh, yeah, he needs a Zeus heal. Somebody get it. I got it. Give you all Zeus heal. Thank you. Zeus heals for everyone. <laughs> all right, stack one. Stack two. Stack three. Negative. Four set. Stack two. All right, breach, breach, breach. Full speed. They're up front. Stairs. Stairs, stairs, stairs. Stack one. They're stack one. Stack two. Two set, go. Breach, breach, breach. They're breach. Wrap around. Neither. 
Their second one. Exit. Breach. Let's go ahead and let them breach it, moms. We're up on the staircase. Wrap around, make sure you're wrapping around. Sorry, Dan. Make sure you're wrapping around, you gotta make sure. Keep going. Stack one. Stack two. Reach. Contact. All right. Don't lay down. Man. Yeah, don't lay down on the top of the stairs. We're going to cover that right now. Let's actually, uh, let's go downstairs all the way, and we'll, we'll cover that. So this is much more apparent when we're doing a two-man breach, so we'll, we'll jump over to the two-man building again, and I'll show you what I mean. One of the worst things you can do is stop... Obstruct someone's path. Yeah, obstruct someone's path, exactly right. Um and it's just because it'll get the rest of the team killed. Right, if such you've got a procedural question, what do you do if my ammo runs out? Yeah, you definitely don't want to obstruct anyone's path, so you stack here, stack one, stack two, breach, reach, reach, and if I just don't move, you're screwed. So I will stop here and I can engage, but that does no good for the rest of the team. And if I go down, the enemy is now pointing at the doorway, ready for the next person to try and come through that freaking door. Bad situation. All right, any other questions on breaching for right now? Yes. Uh, so, shouldn't we always call it if we're doing for a man breach? Exactly what we're breaching. Uh, what do you mean? So, when do you use a four man breach? No, like. I called it uh, when we breached the door in the two main subdivision. I've read that book. Like on the front door, are you saying? I don't understand the question. I'm sorry. Could you ask again? So, I called it when I was the lead breacher on the door. With two men, with the two man team, and the large building, that we were breaching the door. Should that be done? Or no? Uh, moms, JDM, do you know what he's asking? Uh, no. What did he say? I think we're having a little bit of trouble hearing you. Could you maybe put it in the chat for me? Over radio. Oh yeah, try saying it over radio and we'll hear you a little better. Should we always call it precisely what we're breaching? More, uh, oh, call, call out what you're breaching? Well, it not always, just because generally a four-man breach is going to be your whole fire team. So your whole team is hopefully aware of what's happening. The team leader staying outside, keeping an eye on the situation and uh, addressing it if something goes horribly wrong. Um... But yeah, no, it, it can be called out. If you're doing a four-man breach, or say like you're in two-man groups and you're separated, and you find a four-man building, you'll call out over the radio, say, hey, I need a four-man breaching team at this building, and you'll mark it on the map or something, and then the team will come to you, and you'll you'll get the breach done. Right. So yeah, that's, that's how that would be handled, and you'll see that once you get into the op. Again, this is a lot of stuff you just need to know so that you're able to not be running around like a chicken with your head cut off during the op. So let's go over one last quick thing before we move on. Can I get some vehicles too, Zeus guys? Top floor, I'll see you up there. What is this? Ambitious. Just want to see how quickly you can run stairs. Uh, sure, you do know what's on the top. No, I didn't. Now I do. Okay. 
Oh, piece of there shit, stay up there. People up there. Okay, so in a situation like this, you don't want to throw a grenade through this gap. I recommend waiting at least two operations before you're the guy who throws a grenade through this gap. Because it's very easy to screw this up. Just don't, don't do it unless you're in a really, really tough spot and you can't get out of it. But in this situation, I'm going to tell you to do it. Go ahead and toss that frag up there. Go ahead and throw a frag, Max, when you're ready. Get it on the roof. Dick. Sure, what kind of vehicles did you need? Now, you see how that can go really badly? Yep, and we were very, very lucky that it wasn't a frag. Exactly. So that's why I say don't do it until you're 100%. It's just because regardless of how good you are, uh, it can it can always go wrong. You can always bounce it wrong. You know, it can always... You see that one came back down? I can go away. Bad AF. Oh my god. Okay, can we come up there? How about How about we don't? Thought that was a frag. God damn it. Alright, let's go. Clear off the enemies, guys. We're coming up. They're all clear. Thank you, sir. Let's go next. So one key item is going to be the repelling. So you're going to have to come over to this ledge and you'll figure out how to use this pretty quick. You mouse wheel and you have the option to repel self. Oh, that's, I've used that mod before. Cool. So yeah, if you understand it, then uh, we don't need to cover too much about it. Just understand that you can shoot while repelling and you're going to need to do so often. So just keep that in mind. Engage and repel. Engage and repel. And enter windows when needed. All right. So, uh, Max, go ahead and ride first vehicle with me. Uh, JDAM, ride second vehicle with, uh, with moms. Max, go ahead and take the gun. In gunner. All right, go ahead and uh, move to a passenger seat now and go first person. Uh, moved in. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So a couple of the key things on these vehicles that you're going to need to understand. Uh, in a passenger seat on a vehicle like this, you are not all along for the ride like you are in Arma vehicles. This is an active firing vehicle. You are able to shoot back while moving in this vehicle, and you understand how to do so. Roll down the window, yeah, get your gun out. Perfect. So yeah, you understand. Uh, it's a key element that you're going to need to be able to shoot back while we're moving. And you're going to need to understand that your responsibility is to shoot back and not just ride along. All right, go ahead and roll it up. So our protocol for vehicles, go ahead and jump into gunner seat. Our protocol for vehicles is to maintain convoy pace. And one key way to do that, and convoy pace is going to be uh, 30 here, guys. One key way to do that is to set your cruise control, which can be done by hitting delete while you're holding down W. So you can hit your delete key, lock in your cruise control for your vehicle, and then your vehicle will maintain whatever speed you were at before, which is important. Now, when you're in friendly territory, when you're in friendly territory, we will maintain uh, the proper right side of the road, uh, American side of the road. When we're in enemy territory, or we've stepped off in enemy territory, you'll drive center line on the highway. You're going to drive and maintain the center line. Now, the reason we do that is because of IED threats. IEDs can look like a million different items and they are a huge risk to the unit. Things like the trash pile off to our right and the destroyed car are both very likely IEDs and we can always make sure that we're being careful when we're seeing stuff like that. Detonations from something that size and a large explosive can wipe out the entire convoy very quickly. So you've always got to be on the lookout for IED threats. Right, I forgot to question. Now, when coming into contact, the 91st is going to handle contact in vehicles in two different ways. The first way is going to be push through contact, which Zeus, can you assist me with demonstrating that in a bit here? 
uh, push through contact, what happens is the vehicles will disable their cruise control and go full speed as fast as they can safely drive until they are clear of the enemy threat. Once they are clear of the enemy threat, then you'll go back down to convoy speed and the convoy commander will call out when that is the case. Now the other situation is when there will be a stop to engage and the convoy commander calls out a halt. So go ahead, uh, push through, push through, push through. IDs, we're going to do the best we can here because it's a push through. Go ahead and return to convoy speed. See if I land. Did the Humvees make it? The other Humvee? Uh, they might not be coming. Okay, so yeah, that's that's one of the different things that'll happen. Contact right, contact right. Contact. One of the other things that we'll do is we'll call, call for a halt, a formation halt or convoy halt. What'll happen on a convoy halt is the vehicles will take up a 45 degree angle like so. If I call for a dismount, the gunners will stay mounted and stay shooting back, and everyone else will dismount the vehicles. Now the reason behind the 45, and the reason we use a 45 degree angle, and go ahead, I'll show you now, go ahead and dismount Max, and can you get the fire, make the fire die down and bring him back, moms? So the reason we use a 45 degree angle max and the reason the 45 is so important is because it allows us to have a firing position or a defensive position from 360 degrees. We're able to stay in cover behind this vehicle and say, you know, there was more of us, we're all able to use this vehicle as a firing position and a cover position from contact from the northeast. More than that though, if we were attacked from say the front, direct front, the vehicle provides us just as much covered now from this position say the contact was down the street let's uh yeah so we have just as much cover position and just as much ability to engage from here as we did before now say the contact was directly rear same thing enough room for the entire unit to go ahead and sit up and fire back from that's why the 45 degree angle is very important now i'm going to show you what it looks like when you don't use a 45 go ahead and stay uh stay clear real quick Now, can I have all four guys standing at the back of the Humvee right now? Now, one of the key elements of this is, say we, we didn't uh, take that 45 degree angle that we're supposed to. Now, there's barely enough room here for the two of us, let alone stacking back three more guys that could have been riding in our vehicle. Do you see what I mean? Do you understand where I'm coming from on this one, Max, and why that, that angle is so important? Perfect. So yeah, that's that's the critical item there. That's why you take a 45, and that's why you need to make sure you do that. Now, if we call for a full convoy dismount, that's when the gunners will dismount, but we'll only do that when we're in a safe zone. All right, we're on to the last item. Can I get a helo here, guys? Yep, what kind? Anything? Something fun. Something we don't get to use in actual game. Alrighty. Hands, maybe. Uh, we use like everything in game. One of the threats is you see this civilian coming down the road to us. Civilians are really hard to deal with in a lot of situations because they will act very weird. They will do strange things like trying to hide in bushes. And we'll have to deal with that threat accordingly. Most of the time we'll fire warning shots and we'll set a civilian distance. If they're breaching that distance after getting a warning shot, so go ahead and... Most cases they'll take off and they'll run a different direction. If they take off towards you though, and they take steps towards your position, that's when you're free to engage. And that's exactly why. And there goes the helicopter. So yeah, you understand, you gotta kinda treat that as carefully as you can, because obviously we don't want a civilian casualty incident. But in some cases, that's something that we have to take care of in order to maintain the safety of the rest of the unit and our equipment. Okay, for the Zeus's, I'm about to here. 
So we're going to go over helo dismount. Helo dismount is just as it's done in many operations and uh, public operations. It's a five second sprint away from the bird. So regardless of what your positioning is, uh, one key item that I want to make sure you know is that when you're in a vehicle within the unit, you have to understand that you are shooting back at all times. You're not along for the ride. If you're touching down and you're on a bird like this, you are shooting the entire time until you're off the bird. And then you're shooting back as soon as you find a good position once you dismount. So go ahead and put us down anywhere in a clearing. We're gonna do, okay. we'll do three touch-offs and pickups. So you're gonna sprint for five seconds away from the helo. And you're gonna grab the nearest hard cover. If there is no hard cover, you're gonna go down in your belly. Dismount, go, 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 go. While sprinting, you're gonna try and take an angle away from the other players. You don't wanna end up directly next to somebody. All right, go ahead and reload, reload. Good work. When under contact, you can get on the skid and be loaded and then still shoot back. Make sure you understand that. Go, 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 go. All right, reload, reload, reload. X filling. Last man. Last man. Urban landing this time. Dismount. And you'll immediately, in a situation like this, exactly right. Stack one. Stack two. Reach, reach, reach. Door, 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 door. Stairs. Door's priority. Go. Stack one. Stack two. Reach, reach, reach. Clear. Let's head for the stairs. Mom's on it. Stack one. Stack two. Stack two. Stack two. Reach, reach, reach. Stack three. Door. We got door and we got a hallway. Yeah, hallway clear. Okay, go ahead and stack it, Max. Stack Moms, one. go. Stack two, stack set. Reach. Perfect. Excellent work. Max, at this time, I'm going to go ahead and certify you have, in fact, completed uh, protocol of AIT for day one and day two with the 91st Special Forces Group. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. So thank you for doing so. Um, you're all set at this point. I will get your paperwork submitted now and you should be good to go. Welcome to uh, being allowed to participate in ops. And once you complete your main op, then you should be good as a uh, full unit member. Thank you moms and uh, JDAM for participating in this tonight. And thank you everybody who's watching this video later on. I hope you guys uh, found it informative. If you have any questions or comments or things you think we are doing wrong, please put it in the comments below. We'll make adjustments. Uh, also, feel free to check out our website at 91stSpecialForcesGroup.com. You can get more information about possibly joining our unit or how, why we do things there.